Come in, hey, what's this? Oh, sorry. Oh, right, never went. Right, the buttons are on. Did anyone hear that before? No. Unbelievable. They did on that, but they've not on that. I thought you'd done this before. I'm an amateur, I've only been doing it for a few years. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are, we're here. Good morning, Paddy. Thanks for coming. What a start. Do you know what? I've just had a walk round the market there because people might be watching somewhere. We're in Bolton at the minute. And. I parked my car up outside, and I've not been on that car park for a while. Went to the machine, now it says you can put three numbers in, and sometimes not all race plates have three numbers on, it could be letters or anything else, or all that carry on, so that was the first obstacle. But then, I put in the money and it wouldn't accept my money. This is purely my fault, yeah, I don't know if you've done this. No, <laughs> look at that. Old pound coins. Old pound coins, I've still got four, four pound in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even, you can't even use them anymore, that's how long they've been in my pocket. And I pulled up and I thought, oh, I'll swap you then. Here we go. I've got bank. And I, and, and I was just getting ready to have a bit of a, like, find someone going, can you tell me what's up with these machines? And yeah. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so I'll probably, here, put them. Because you, you, can you still put them in the bank? You can put them in the bank. Right, okay, then take them. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Four quid in? Yeah. I'm four quid For charity. For charity, sorry. For charity. <laughs> four I'm four pounds heavier, okay? I wish I could put four pounds on in a day. So if I, when I go out and I've got a ticket on my car, I'm using this as evidence in court. <laughs> so this could be part of a legal case. But, you know, it's just there. I'm just covering all bases. Morning. Morning. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Do you know, it's always morning in my world, Paddy. Do you know what I love as well? I, I, it's, it's great to be here with you because there's loads to talk about and I'll ask you loads of things as well because obviously you're a legend in the town and I know what you've done within martial arts no, and everything leg else. Keep but this, leg end. I come in, this yeah. is his research. <laughs> Look at that. Paddy My name. Is. That's it. Like Page. That's all we need. That's all we need. That's all we need. It's all in here. It's all in here. <laughs> Actually, there's a, there's a story behind this pad. It. I've actually left the pad. I've got two of these pads, right? <laughs> and the, the pad I'm, I'm supposed to be doing is in my car with all the, the stuff Brilliant. on it. This is a what, this is a good start. It's not a good this start. Is a good start. I've been here. I've been here an hour. I could have gone into the car ten times. I've uh, I had a bacon and sausage bar outside. Very nice. I'm going to get a couple. Of, you know what? I, I miss about coming on Bolton Market custards. Oh. I love a custard. Can I ask you this? Hot or cold? Oh, it's cold for me. Cold. You never had a hot one. Never in my life. Paddy, They're always cold out the fridge. No. When you go in a pie yeah, shop. No, but you, you, they, they made hot. I'll tell you a story. Well, I used to work at well, hang on a minute. <laughs> Cheesecakes are made hot as well, but you don't. You don't. The, the cold. It's supposed to be eaten cold. I know they're made hot, but they have, they have to got to be baked, Sandy. But, but when you have it, <laughs> the idea is to have it cold. A lot of things are made hot, but they have to cool down. All right, they're not. <laughs> oh, it's like saying an ice cream cone's made hot in a factory, but you've got to. It can't be hot. We put bloody ice cream in it; it melts all over your hands, Sandy. Yeah, we're not, Christ, not gonna almighty, get much, what's going on here? Sorry, we're not going to get much. <laughs> we're not going to get through much today. We? We've not even got past. Not even got past the hot custard. Right, can I tell you about hot custard? Go, yeah, go on. Give one a go. Seriously, uh, uh, at the age of blah blah blah, started Warburton's at fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you work at Warburton's? Yeah. So did I. Serious? Yeah. I wow, did. I used to have a sat company. job though. I used to have a sat is... job there for about... Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, I worked there for about ooh, a year and a half, two years, sat the job. 17 quid a shift I were on. That's how long ago it was. And it was cleaning the dough off the machines. And I used to get up. It was, it was winter when I started. I used to live up double at the time. And I walked there every Saturday, right? So you used to walk there, pitch black, freezing. teeming down, oh. freezing. I used to have an all in my shoe, my sock would be hanging out at the end, <laughs> like, like a dog's tongue by the time I got there. And then I'd go in the factory, you know it's like the up Blackburn Road, uh, no windows, so I'd be in, cleaning all day, and then finish at six o'clock, walk home in the dark for 17 quid. But at the time, getting a wage used to make you feel so good. How old was you? Oh God, 17, yeah. something like that, yeah. Um, and I used to think, and a few of my mates, you know, were like, not doing much, signing on or whatever. But it was like, it was great, it was horrendous, at the, you know, you, I hated it. But looking back, I think I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good yeah, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. So anyway, hot custards. I thought I'd see, I thought I took him off that. Yeah. But he's not forgot it. He hasn't. He, he's like a, a dog with a bone. Right, go on then. <laughs> right, go <Yeah>. on. <laughs> 
I'll say something else in a minute. I'll take him off again. Yeah. Come back with it. Hot custard. Half twelve today. Anyhow, hot custard. <laughs> and if, if anyone's you know watching this on the internet, don't Google hot custard. Please, no. Please Whatever don't. you do, don't Google hot custard. We're not sure what could come up. <laughs> Literally. Kids, if you want. Go watching. on, anyhow. So, I was 15, started at Warburton's, <clears throat> learning the trade as a, I was just a lackey. Mm. And, and I'll tell you how much I was on a, a week, Paddy, not on a Saturday. Right. Have a guess what I was on a week. <sighs> Take a stab. Warby's wages. Uh, were good. Warby's wages were good. 80. Plus 80 a what? Quid. Are you having a laugh? Too much. Wait a minute, too much. Too less. Right, you're not only 28, right? Go so, on. <laughs> right. Paddy, I'm 15, right? It's all those years ago. Yeah. I just left school. Yeah. yeah. And... My first weeks, weeks we got paid weekly, which I thought was amazing. Cash yeah. in, a, in a little, you know, little envelope like that. It's great when you got that. Like that. Seven pound thirty-six. No way. For a week. I'm serious. That is mad, isn't it? But it's a long time ago, buddy. It's mad. Yeah. Let's talk about custards. Well, my mate still works at Warby's, yeah. and they've, he's on seven eighty a week now. So they've, they've upped his wage twenty p. <laughs> they've come on leaps and so, bounds at Warby's. Seven eighty an hour or a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, I've learned to betrayed. I'm, a, I'm just a van assistant. Yeah. Eventually gets my driving license at 18. And at 19, I'm doing my own rounds type of thing. And one of the areas was Bolton. I was going up Bright, mate. Brain Power, if you're watching, thank you. It was your granddaddy who used to make these. And he used to, it was a little bakery shop, mm. top of Brow. Yeah? Yeah. And as we drove, drove around the corner up the street, winter's morning, freezing cold, like you said. Mm. And then you just got this smell of this bakery. Even though we're working in a bakery, I was yeah, looking at Warby's, so I got this double smell, smell of yeah. bre bread in the morning as I got up. Yeah. At like half five, six o'clock as I pulled into Warby's. And then again at like half past six as I'm driving up the hill, I get to the top. Oh, and then out from the oven, is the brain, brain powers grad, I pulls out custards, red hot custards. And I'm like... Oh, the custard's my favourite. Yeah, yeah. And I went, ah, and he went, do you want one? He said, but they're still hot. And I went, well, it's freezing, isn't it? No, you see how it come about. You see that? He said, yeah. they're still hot as though you're not supposed to have them. <laughs> no, too hot, too old. Too no, old. no, he's telling you there, no. Sandy. You should have took notice. You've gone, fair enough, but go on, go on then. So he went, they're still hot. It's just about setting. By the time yeah. I'd served the bread and coming out, it was warm enough, cool enough yeah. <laughs> to put it in my hand <laughs> and eat it, a warm custard. Oh. Oh, I mean, I'm not, I bet it is delicious. Oh, man. I mean, they're, they're, it's just, for me, it's like, and it feels like, I spend a lot of time in London these days. You go into any bakery and then ask for a custard. Won't have a clue. Nothing. It's like, blank. It's like chips and gravy and what, peas down there. They don't know, do What they? they have down there is a thing, it's like a Portuguese custard called a natter. And it's a Portuguese thing. They do them at Nando's and stuff like that now. Right. They're nice, but they're not. They're not, proper custard. They're not proper custards. It's, honestly, when I walk you through though, then I saw them, I thought I'm going to get a couple of them, take them home. They do the proper plate ones here and all that, that right. downstairs, so I'm going to get a couple and take back to me. Cool. Yeah. So, we've done half an hour on custard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can I talk about this in front of us? If that's okay. Talk about anything you like. Because, obviously, <clears throat> for myself, growing up in Bolton, you know, your name, synony synonymous with Thai boxing, martial arts in general, and as a kid, you know, I'd see your club and I'd see your name around and it was like, oh God, you know, Sandy's the one, must train with Sandy. And when I saw this picture here, I don't know if you can see this, look at that. That is amazing. Black and white, that's how old it is. <laughs> Bolton News. Neil Bonner, thank you. Bolton News have been good to us. And, and, the, and the bloke there who's, uh, who you've absolutely sparked out, Jeff Bullock, basically what's happened there with Jeff is he's just eating a warm custard. <laughs> And that's what do. never eat warm custards, kids. That's what happens. You look at Jeff Bullock at one back in the day. And that's Sandy telling him they're lovely. He's like, what? Cold custard. Oh, that's what happens to you. But that's amazing. Can I look at that picture? Because obviously you're in you're in your, your tie shirt, but he's in the, the the longer trousers. So he's like he's even more of a kickboxing style. Yeah, well, this came about, Paddy, um, and thank you for those kind words, mate, that's too kind. <laughs> but um, the, the guy, yeah, he's wearing kickboxing pants, or, or you know, karate, you can call them, yeah. gi pants. Yeah. Um, he was a kickboxer, black belt, uh, in jiu-jitsu, uh, kickboxing. He did Muay Thai with Master Toddy, so he was doing that as well. Um, the guy had, had something like around about, well, actually, this is this is the second fight. The first right. fight, I fought him on his and his brother's show in Liverpool, and he was the first person to beat me. Um, had 11 straight wins, right. and... He beat me on points, but I give him way too much respect. I think because somebody said, oh, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, he's a black belt in karate, he's a black belt in this, 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 and I built this big reputation up about yeah. him. 
and I went five rounds with him and I just basically I was just one step behind him because yeah. all the time I I just felt you know that he was it's amazing. better than me and yeah. you already lost haven't you so it was a, a big learning curve it's it amazing the, best the power, of, power of, you, of your own mind in that situation it's like you say it's like when in football a lot of teams back in the day you know when they go against United and they've already lost before they've stepped on the pitch because you talk yourself out of it yeah. and there's a, a mount of, and no one here your, your level but when I've done competitions over the years and you go in against someone and you do that you, you You've you've taught yourself only about any you think, oh god, actually. Actually. Could have yeah. could have could have won that or if mm. I'd have just done that, you know, but you yeah. you give them that much respect straight away. Not that you sh you should always respect your opponent, oh, yes, but, but you know, way more. But you can talk yourself out of it a little bit. Yeah. But not the second time. Because you, know, you knew then. Got him back in Bolton, took four years. Um and <clears throat> yeah, so that well the result was there, but it came under a slightly different format because Jeff probably back then and myself a little bit unbeknownst to everyone this was just before the UFC breakthrough because mm. um, this is in the 80s where the UFC I think started was it 90 or not early 90s yeah, I think it was be, yeah so this was mid mid 80s late 80s I think that was in fact that fight was 87 um, and so this was pre mixed martial arts pre mm. UFC and this was an actual about where you're allowed to th do throws as well no yeah so you could do takedowns so I'm finding a, a black belt jiu-jitsu yeah. black belt judo karate guy kickboxer tie boxer who beat me the first time and then I'm playing into his rules I was going to so, say because when you said about the, the jiu-jitsu especially I thought oh well I, that wouldn't help him in there but obviously it would have done yeah so Cracky. yeah it was interesting but can I ask you you know you say it was four years so you got him back to Bolton yeah in those four years honestly oh Many days went by where you didn't think about that, that loss. There's never a day. I know it does, doesn't it? It's just yeah. it, it yeah. drives it drives me mad. Like even now at my age and what I've accomplished and everything else, I can think back to being 21 year old in a competition in Wigan, say, just a, an inter club one or anything, and if I, and I'll think n even now, you know, there could have been 30 people in the room watching. Like, why did I not do that? Why did I not sweep his leg? Why did I not do a back fist? You know what I mean? You, yeah. you try. It, you just. It's just in, isn't it? I think it's with every single competitor. Right? I think that in all sports, and obviously with martial arts, we'll touch on that today, Barry. But you know, um, that's where I first first met you, um, yeah. which was up at Horrocks Leisure Centre. Yeah. Because that's where we. Used to, this was at Bolton Sports Centre, somewhere yeah. else, if you remember back yeah, in the day. Yeah, of course, yeah, I remember. I used to train it. So I, I first started doing. The first martial art I ever did was uh, Shaolin Kung Fu, and it was at Civil War Street. Yeah, because yeah, it was the combat room upstairs, wasn't That's it? That's right, they yeah. had Seven days a week, so it really was, again, it was the mixed martial arts um, pre, pre, wasn't it? It was already the happening. Civil War Street, for me, was like a <coughs> bit of a martial arts mecca. It yes, all it went was. on there. Uh, all, yeah. all these kind of events, all the freestyle kickboxing events right. used to go on there. Yeah. And it used to be... Even yeah. Well, Tom Scott did he not have a class there? Tom Scott had a, had a class there. Yeah. The day you put a picture. Of, which yeah. Was really nice. Oh, um, it was fantastic. Tom used to again. teach there because that's what I, that's how I first started teaching in Bolton was up in that combat room yeah. in 1983. We did a I year there. That room. And um, the only reason why we came out of that room is because there was that many martial arts wanted to use it. Yeah. It was like ten martial arts, and there's only seven days. Yeah. And they used to. I don't know how this works because I don't know it works in, in your world, but it certainly doesn't work in mine. A class they'd have a class six till seven and have a class seven till eight. Well you can't stand and finish no, on the same time. No. So everyone was vying for this hour yeah. or the next hour and everyone was getting angry with each other. Mm. And it caused so many problems between instructors. Um, and it wasn't the instructors problem it for our fault it was the, the way the so, sports centre yeah ran. exactly because so there used to, to be, there used to be a, when you walked in Civil War there was that big hall yeah and there was like a room on your left they'd do stuff now and again but it was very it was a hard floor That's kind it. of like school all type room yeah but the one when you went through the one at the top at the back. Yeah, past the five aside, and then you're upstairs, and they actually had a padded, it's the first padded floor I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, well that's yeah. where yeah. I first started training with Tom though, but, but like even walking, God I can see it now, when you used to walk oh, and look at those steps up in front of you, and you're like, it's a bit like the steps to your place, like you Get just, just no, you do, you, you, <laughs> they, they part of, you know, when you're first doing stuff like that, and I always say about any kind of martial arts, I was saying this over there on, on my Instagram post, it's never, for me, martial arts was never about Oh, I must be hard, or I must be this, yeah. or it must be that. You know, I loved watching uh, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and Marshall. I loved all that, and it got me interested in it. But it was purely for me the fun and the fitness side of it. It was so good, but the discipline, especially yeah. as a kid. Yeah. You know, you get a good teacher and everything else. And I, I'd recommend it to anyone. It, you know, I think a lot of people get put off by it because they think, oh, I'm going to get beat up, or this, mm -hmm. or that, or. And a lot of clubs, you know, you know yourself over the years, there's a lot of clubs where it, I've gone in some clubs in fast form. I'm not feeling this, you know, yeah, they're just yeah. all e egos and all that. Yeah. But you, now, you know, there's a lot of fantastic clubs out there 
family clubs as well. You know, yeah, your club, much. you know, you've got a lot of kids in, families mm -hmm. come, you know, couples. And it's just a, a great way of keeping fit these days. And everyone's banging on about health and fitness and what have you. And I think, for me, still trading now, and I started back up again recently, I prefer that than being out on the roads running all day or on a bike or on a <laughs> rowing machine. It's just, a, a, I still get a sweat on and I get out of breath and you tone up and you get fit. But I'm not thinking about getting fit. You're just doing it. And you're knackered when you're doing it, but you're yeah. just doing it and having fun, yeah. you know, it's fantastic. No, it's great. I mean, I've, I've noticed a lot. I mean, you're looking in absolutely fantastic shape and I've been watching some of your stuff and following you, Paddy, on this. I mean, you did, um, let's talk about that. Um, you just decided to do this bike ride. <laughs> How far was that? Yeah, we did 160 odd miles. The bike, the official bike ride is 141. We did 168. We got lost. I just got to say, I saw that bit where you got twice. lost. Twice. You were twice. 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 You went, I think I'm lost. That again. was what? That was just me on my own. I did 10 miles one way in the wrong direction, so then you go 10 miles back. Hey, what the what the hell's going on here? Somebody's trying what to is this? Uh, yeah, I had to do 10 miles in the wrong direction. So you do 10 miles That's coming 20 miles then, isn't it? Straight on. Oh. You know what I mean? And, but what we did, you know it's like groups of friends. Someone mentioned it one one day, a few months back, we should do that bike ride. Yeah, why not? It'd be a bit of fun, wouldn't it? We'll do it over three days. I'd not been on a bike in five years, right, till the day I got to the start line. Five years, not been on a bike. And by the end of day one, my backside, so never mind your legs it. and all that. Like, like, oh, it. Yeah. and people saying, put padded shorts on, put yeah. this cream on, do this, do that. <laughs> Didn't make any difference. But once you get over that, that's another thing where I go, I've done it, and I'm glad I've done it. And, and people say, oh, of course, of course, I say, oh, I've done that. You know, it's just another one to, to tick off. It's and yeah, doing it with friends, it were, it were unbelievable, but... Uh, so were you stopping in, were you stopping like B&Bs? We, we camped, just, like, we camped. camped. So yeah. the first night we stayed in a, an hotel, uh, and then the second night we did the full camper thing, and that was the best night. I, I mean, I wanted camp both nights, yeah. but a couple of my mates are a bit like above the stations. You know, one's a manager, a, 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 a company, in but he thinks he's bloody Alan Sugar. He's like, I'm not staying in a tent. Not in a right, tent. so, so, uh, but we had a, we had a ride. Five star up, yeah, on the way yeah. across on your bike. You? What's good about it and all? Because I was just doing this, um, this big training thing recently, and I've stopped now, started filling out again now. But it'll take me a while. But I stripped right down, so I went down to about twelve stone two. And if I took my shirt off. You look great, but in your clothes, you like just look really thin. Yeah. So I started filling out again. I'm back to 13 stone, but I'll be back up to fighting weight by next year. Um, but the good thing about the bike ride was, because you're burning so many calories, at, at the end of the night, you're like lasagnas, garlic bread, cheesecake, hot custards, hot custards, <laughs> hot custards <laughs> anything you want, because you know the day after you're on the bike and, you, and you're away. Yeah. But if you've never done it, and I'm not, a, I'm not a, like a biker, I'm not like no. one of these who, but as a, if you can do it with a group of people, I'll do it again for charity I think next year, um, but if you've got a group of friends, again you don't have to be at any level, just plod along, don't be afraid of getting off and pushing now and again, because some of the hills are like, I mean, they're, they're really extreme. Where is it, where is it from, Paddy? Where, it's where from it Whitehaven like? all the way <laughs> oh, yeah. up to uh, Sunderland. Right. Um, but it's just a, a really good experience, and because so many people do it, you know, every you know, there's like every now there's like little butty stops, like little vans, but they're there for the bikers, and yeah. it's, it's like a community. You know, I didn't know anyone there, and no one knew why I worked because I had glasses, and helmet on, so no one knew. Oh, here's Paddy McGuinness kind of thing. Yeah. But they just welcome you, and they're clapping you as you go past, and just the random, it just, it could be yeah, anybody. just yeah. anyone, and it's a lovely feeling. I right. definitely, I recommend doing it. Right, there's yeah. one of my lads at my gym, one of my instructors called Garby Brennard. He's um, he's just put on Facebook yesterday actually saying he wants to, to do a bike ride from our gym to Wales. Mm. Not part, not sure what part of Wales. I hope it's not south because that's like probably further than what <laughs> yeah. you've done. But um, anyway. A few people jumped on it, and you know, a few jokes going on about somebody put on there like I can't do. I've got a big fat bum or something. And somebody yeah. put, well, go do it tandem, like you jump on bike front, one could do artwork, yeah. you know. <laughs> but yeah, we're into, you know, you've got a big say, fat bum. It probably help you. It probably would, wouldn't yeah. it? More cushioning. Absolutely. There we go. So well, I, I've got no bum, so I'm gonna be like you, Paddy. We're walking oh. like jo like, in, like walking like John Wayne in a gay factory. Um, <laughs> it's not honestly. Yeah. It is. It? It's, it's, it's it's it's. But once you get over that, you're all right. But it's definitely worth doing. Yeah. Definitely worth doing. It, I, I loved it. But there's, you know, there's some people, uh, extreme athletes, can do it in a day. Don't know how. 
And Ben Shepard, you know who does GMTV and Tipping Point and all that? He's, yes, he's, yeah. he's a fit lad, <coughs> Ben. He's just yeah. kept himself, he's just, he's always doing stuff you won't know, right, marathons, this, that, and other. And they're on my way up there. You know when someone tries to G you up but demoralises you at the same time? Oh, so yeah. I'm going, Shep, sir. I thought, he's, he's definitely done this course to course. I said, I said I'm on my way up to uh, White, I'm doing course to course. Amazing. Good on you and all that. I say, yeah, the plan is we're going to do uh, do it over three days, camping up middle day, we'll get the, what time you think? He said, yeah, he said, well, what I did, he said, I did it on t over two days, but when I got off at the other end, back, then I ran it back what? on the last one. So he did, so it's equivalent <laughs> to doing something like five back-to-back -back marathons running by. And I was like, I'm put... See ya. Turn out. Yeah. Have an hot custard. <laughs> Have a day off, Jeff. Have a day off. Have an hot custard. You know what I mean? It's like, but for me, I was just glad I did it. You know, and it's not. And uh, you know, I'm 45, and you know it is. I, I'd not be like I said, I've been on bike for five years. I did it, and I was going past younger lads and this. That. And I'm like, I think if you've got it in your head to do it, you'll do it. Yeah. You Did know, you just like anything what else. Else. Why you to do this? Because you said he wanted a charity thing. It was just literally it. one of the lads mentioned it, as you do one night, sat in a boozer or wherever we were. <laughs> I've got a group of lads who I've been mates with right from uh, school, and um, and we do stuff every year. But it's funny as the years go on, you kind of start doing all these things, and then it start, goes towards like golf. Let's do a golf trip, you right. know, a golf trip. Let's yeah. do a walk, yeah, you so know. And then one of the lads, we must have had like a midlife crisis thing. We went, we we can do that. And we went, yeah, we'll do it. And that's a bit come about, but yeah. uh, oh, but yeah. again, I, I think if we really properly trained for it, it probably would be able to do it in two days. Yeah. But you'd have to be really pushing it. Right. It's hard work. It's hard work. Some of those hills, like they literally are like day two's the worst. It's, it's you're uh, you a three thousand foot climb. Wow. But you're never off an hill. So whether it's like that or like that or like that, you're always uphill. Always. Is that well, so where's the downhill? Coming, well, where you get to the last day, sort of coming down into Sunderland, is a, a few downhills or flat. Listen, a flat road's a godsend on yeah, day it's three. Like it feels like a downhill. Yeah, yeah, even a slight hill's a godsend on day three, but yeah. day two is an absolute killer. Absolute right. killer, but we've done it, that's the main thing. Good on you. Jumping back, Paddy, to um, how old was you when you started martial arts? Oh, well, that Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, I'd hazard a guess at eight. Would you? Yeah, so yeah. Um, Fantastic. And like I was saying before, you know, it's you sort of watch films, and I remember like watching a film at the time, uh, Cannonball Run. Do you remember Cannonball Burt Reynolds? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I loved that film as a kid. It was brilliant, funny, and great cars. But Jackie Chan's in it, oh, yeah, and he, he, he gets yeah. out the car and he beats up a load of bikers in a bar. Oh, you know, yeah. and, and I remember as a kid, sort of going. Wow, what's yeah. jumping up, split kicks, this, that, and like, what is this? I love some of that. Yeah, and uh, and then Bolton him News, you know, all the clubs used to advertise in the back and what have you, and saw this one, Silver Wall Street, and went down, and I loved it, you know, and I, I kind of got the bug for, ma for martial arts in general. And then right from the age of eight, I've always done something. Whether it's Aikido, kickboxing, karate, uh, re Queensbury boxing, uh, kung fu, jujitsu, I've always never to any great level, but I've always done something because yeah. I just like it, yeah. you know. Uh, the trickiest one I found uh, was the jujitsu, yeah, because uh, especially this BJJ they do now. I, again, I tried that again a few weeks ago, and it's so alien to me mm. that it frustrates me. Because, you know, with any kind of striking martial arts, you know, if you've done something, you can, you know, if you've done a roundhouse in karate, you're pretty much all right doing a roundhouse in kickball. So, uh, you know, yeah, you can, can pick it up. It, yeah. You can, yeah, you've got, the, you've got the, the, best, the body mechanics. Yeah, but I was on the floor with this guy the other, the other day. Sounds wrong. Yeah. And uh, roll, roll custards it. everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but he was, he was just not even breaking a sweat. And I could, and I was all, oh, and I was like, "What is this?" You know. And they were showing me a few techniques, and they were so alien. I think at my age, you know, I love doing the kickboxing. I've just started again, and I understand it, and and, and I'm pretty adapted it. So that, and it keeps me fit. So that's it. But I think if I, if I'd, I'd have started BJJ or or Jiu Jitsu in general in my twenties, I'd have probably still been doing it now. Yeah. But I started a bit too late. Right. I'd already done loads of other stuff, you know. Mm. Like even Aikido when I did that for a few years, you know, there's no strikes as such. But it was kind of 
with the locks and, and you know and the throws so it kind of went back, a little bit back to karate yeah so again that but the jiu-jitsu is just totally i mean those lads are taking me out off to them because they're yeah. mega oh, yeah, fit isn't it the bjj and the um <coughs> you watch them sort of they call it rolling don't they with the yeah. mat and they roll and they have this thing in as um it's it is it's another level i mean i when i first started training i, I actually started in karate and jiu-jitsu and I just found, I mean, back then it was more, mostly Japanese jiu-jitsu, mm. but, it, you know, there's not, they're not a million miles apart. I know there are people who might be watching this and probably say, oh, they're big, they are different. Yes, they are. It's like saying kickboxing and time. Yeah. There are subtle differences, but the point is, you know, you, you're on the floor and it's a floor martial art uh, predominantly and you're learning locks, like you said, and uh, manus. And it's, it, you, somebody's described it to me once and you might get this one. It's like, um, it's like trying to get out of deep mud. No, it is. Yeah, you totally. just wherever you are, you're being. There's just yeah. like nowhere to go. Almost. No, no. Um, it is. It's a, it's a phenomenal, and it's an. It's it's a martial art that's sort of. It's still evolving. There's still moves coming out now. Oh. I do a lot of commentary around the world on MMA, Thai boxing, kickboxing, K1, and I'm watching some moves that I've never seen that before, and you know they're constantly developing it and evolving, mm. and it's um, it's so intricate. Uh, I mean, look at the UFC, you know, they went too much down that route, it was just that recently, but, you know, you watch, um, you know, there's always this debate between a good wrestler and a good yeah. striker, and, you know, if you want to be in a mixed martial arts, you've got to be, you've got to be able to handle yourself pretty much on your feet and on the floor, yeah. and the training involved, Paddy, isn't it, it's phenomenal. I think that's the thing, when you watch, I'm not an expert on UFC <coughs> at all, I watch it like anyone else, I'm yeah. a fan. But I've never been in a cage, I've never participated in, in it, you know, and you've got to be, kind of be a pretty much adapt to a, a, a four different martial arts really to be you know any yes. any any yeah. any level though yeah and what amazes me is like you say that little bit of training that i've done in jiu-jitsu and what have you, when i've been on the floor and absolutely and like i say i did that course to course bike ride it felt okay but when i've been on the floor for like a minute with someone who's good at it like blowing I am gassed, you know, because I cannot figure out why this person's not out of breath. And it's all, like you say, how they, how they hold the self the lot. You know, he's, he's not even blowing. So when you see him in the UFC, when you're knackered and you're in your second round and you've been stood up for a, a minute and a half training blows and kicking, then you find yourself on the floor. I mean, those lads have got... It's not just a case of, like, outside Bolton Superbar with someone in an headlock. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's a, a different... Like, it's, yeah. it's a different gravy, yeah. you know, so... The respect I have for them lads doing yeah. that, and we all know what's happened recently, and that was that'll be what it'll be, yeah. And and it needs to be stopped because what you don't want is for it to come a, a sport where it's a bad influence on children. You know what I mean? Yes. Because uh, everyone loves it, and and yeah. and listen, boxing is the same. We all have good guys and bad guys, and it's like it's like old fashioned Saturday afternoon wrestling. Yeah. It's always going to be a good. It's always going to be yeah. a bad. Yeah. And that's part of it. But that kind of thing needs to be nipped in the bud. But again, as athletes, I I take me out off to those lads because it is yeah. unbelievable the yeah. level of skill and fitness. Yeah. The um, just jump into the what I was saying when I first met you, Paddy, was up at uh, Horace Ledger Centre. Mm. Um, you was working there, I think, wasn't you? At the time, because you helped me out because we we're, were yeah. putting a show on, and I remember coming to the um, to the desk, and I was looking for something. I don't know what it was because we we're setting up or whatever. And you just come running out the office, and the, and you know in with great gusto yeah. and straight downstairs you did you saw I forget what it is actually the particular job that you did to help me out but it was something we were setting up yeah. and you just went bam 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 and you were like no problem boom, boom. super enthusiastic just yeah. you just not changed Paddy you know in the way of like you know whatever you go into you seem to go in with 100% and you've got that real good you know that gungo attitude but like you know you, you, you do a job right don't you yeah. and it's like and I think you know martial arts um, has been a part of, of, of that hasn't it I think it sort of gives you that bit of Zest, zest for life. Well, it, it does, and it's like I was saying. You know, I think the discipline aspect of it, and it's not a, a discipline side where you go into a club and you know whoever's at, at the front is you know it's all very strict. Uh, it's just I don't know what it did for me all these. It just gave me that sense of respect as well for for, for other people, and I, I don't know. I think part of it's that part of it's how you brought up by your mum and your dad or it's whatever part, you know. Well, yeah. uh, but there's a I, I do believe manners are everything and i think if you can do someone a, a bit of a favor you know then it it, it comes back, comes onto, back. On, onto yeah. you you know and yeah. it's not about going out there giving it i'm a you know samaritan or anything like yeah. that but i just think just the little things like you say back then coming you know and we're discussing it here now all those years yeah. later Incredible. so it stays with you know and yeah. that that was just a, a little small act yeah which i'll never forget 
you know, no, never forget. It's, 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 just, true. You know, it's just like I said, it, certain things in your mind stick. Um, you know, phenomenal. But um, you know, you've done martial arts then, technical, like thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forty-five now, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's why it, it's when you were saying about this guy here about with uh, his kickboxing, his jujitsu, and you did jujitsu yourself and what have you. But obviously, everyone knows you for, for Thai boxing. Uh, and I wish I'd have stuck to one thing like that and become really, really proficient in it. But instead, I mean, I still enjoyed it, but. I, did a lot of different. I do a two years here too, because I were always just like that as a person. It's only, it, in fact, funny enough, karate, Shukukai, was the only one when I started with that. And I think it's because I hadn't done much sparring or that kind of stuff in, in the classes. I just instantly enjoyed it, you know. And again, the sparring for me wasn't like I'm best in class or I can beat you. Or I'm going to do this. I just love, like even now when I'm sparring now with someone. And someone like someone did a like a leg kick on me the other week in training, and uh, and I was and I stopped stopped the stopped the trail went do that again, and, and I said right let, show me he did that because I don't care about asking I don't care what level if they're below me above me or wherever they are if I think oh, well I'll have a bit of that yeah that's the way to do it so when you're yeah. sparring it's not about I must win this sparring it's about learning sparring yeah and it's great and it's good it's good to get stuff in but. If someone does something to me, I'll always go, oh, show me that, because I think that works. So, and then he did, and then I started doing it on people. Now, that's in my locker that's all it. the time. But if I'd have just gone, oh, I'm going to get him back for that and carried on, I would have yeah. never have even remembered it. Right. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just... Uh, that's, that's, a good, that's a great way. That's a great way of looking at it. Um, and that's where you, the difference when you're in a good gym and you're a good place that we talked, you just mm. touched on that before, is where people in there have not got egos, there's no you know, testosterone, and guys are all out to beat each other. Um, it's a learning curve, and I think you know, it's finding that, you said it again, about you walk into a certain place, this can happen anywhere, it can happen in a restaurant, mm. sometimes you sit in a seat and you think, I don't feel right here, can I sit there please? And it's yeah. like, you've got, I mean, you've got your head, you've got your heart, you've got your gut feeling, and I think your gut feeling, to me, overrules these two. Mm. You know, people say, I don't know where to go in the heart, mm. I shall go in the head, you know, it's like judge, jury, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's an overaller, and it tends to be this thing. And you walk in, you feel the place, and you feel right in the place, and you think, oh, I mean, I feel all right here. Yeah. Everyone's nice. And then, like you said, with that, some people would have just gone, bam, yeah. like, uh, and just boot your leg again, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. What, I, what have you learned? I remember years ago, uh, a, a very small club in Bolton. I'll not mention any names, not mention the guy's name or what have you. He was like a bit of a freestyle kickboxing kind of guy. He won a few competitions. And I was, at the time, probably a yellow belt in Christ, so just started, but really was interested in the sparring side of it and competitions and stuff like that. I got the bug for that. And I went to his uh, little club and it was exactly that. And he went, I'm going to spar now. And he sparred with me first. And I mean, he absolutely kicked seven bells out of me. And I just thought to myself, like, it really, I thought, why? I never went back. Not out of fear, not out of anything. I thought, what's the point of that? And I just thought, but them clubs are out there. But he quickly disappeared, and as did his students, because... Who's going to go for that? You know, and them kind of places, you go and it's just him and one other person still probably say, talking each other up all the time. But no, no students because, yeah. you know, who wants that? Now, I knew from what he'd done, he could easily wipe the floor with me in any competition, spar or anything. So it wasn't even about that. But I just thought, why do that? You know, why do right. that to all your students to prove to yourself right. that you can do it? See, you go into it. Yeah. So like, you know, you knock people down to build yourself up. And that's what they do, isn't it? And that's, you know, that happens all over the place in all types of... It happens in work, it happens yeah. in school, it happens, you know, it starts from, from early on. Bullying in school starts Gosh, like that, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's a shame, but it's... Uh, but that's why I think it's great clubs like your, your club. Like I say, I was there the other week getting them pads off you and uh, you look up the stairs and the feelings come back in your stomach and you're like, oh, you and you wander up there. I mean, I wandered up the top of them steps the other day and I was glad it were locked. I thought, thank God, you will probably have me on the bloody chin up bar. Yeah, uh, remember those chin ups? Yeah. Oh God, yes, do I. Uh, uh, it's still ready waiting for you. Uh, do you know, again, it's funny how you think of things when you're a kid differently. And when I first looked at, like, Ty, um, and I remember watching something or a, a documentary or a film. It was something as a kid. It was on the telly. And uh, there was a guy that like rolling a rolling pin up and down his shin. And I just remember at the time, I'd just been on my bike. And you know when you miss your pedal, it spins around and it's in the shin. In the shin, yeah. yeah. And the agony. And I watched him doing that. And I went, 
I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. And it's it, funny, isn't it? Because that's like stopped me doing it earlier. Because I was like, whoa. Yeah. And then you see them, yeah. and, and like, you know, when you it's shit against shit, yeah. and you're like, oh, it, even yeah. now it makes me teeth stand on the end. But it's <laughs> funny as a kid, I was like, I'm swerving that. I'm swerving that. And I'm it's swerving surprising, that. You know, I mean, it went, you know, because obviously it's been around a long time in this country. Now. It started in 77. And I remember a lot of people, because obviously there's so much martial arts around there, as you mm. know, as we just talked about before with Silver Well Street. Um, you know, dozens and dozens of martial arts, judo, karate, there was te ten to hundreds of styles of karate, mm. taekwondo, kung fu, blah, blah, wing chun, the, the list is endless. And um, I started in karate, I was wearing shin pads, we, did, we used kick with the foot, mm. and even though you know, you weren't shin pads, you kick with the foot was a bit strange. Mm -hmm. But um, And then suddenly I, I've gone to my first Thai boxing class, met uh, Grandmaster Skem, my teacher, and I've got me, I've gone down. I came in, I've gone down in my karate suit, so my karate bottoms and my karate thing, and my brown belt. There's a brown belt and a yeah. jiu-jitsu and karate. And my first class, and of course I'm stood in a long stance, and I've got my hands down here, and the first, never forget it, my skin just walloped me in the leg here, yeah. with a shin kick. Not hard, he, he didn't, I mean, if he'd have kicked me properly, I'd have brought my leg. Yeah, yeah. He just sort of like, tapped me with his yeah. shin. And like, oh, I was like, you know, you get a dead leg. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's horrible, he feels sick. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and he went lighter up, he didn't speak English. He yeah. only speak about three words, and he yeah. said, because he, cause he couldn't say it, he had to do it. And it was basically to tell him to shorten my stance. Yeah. So and I was like doing this, and. Um, well, that's the difference in that guy. What I said, who I sparred with. Yeah. Who just wanted to beat me up. Where Master yeah. Skin was doing it, not yeah, just watching, to show you, just yeah. show you. Yeah, just tap you, me leg, but it's it it exactly. But, but that's how you, that's the way to do it. Yeah. But the was he, was, was he the first guy to do it in the UK then in seventy seven? Yeah. There's Master Skin, Master Toddy, Master Woody, the three Thai masters who brought it into the UK, and that was seventy seven. I had my first class on seventeenth of November. 1977, I'll never forget it, and it was at Jack McEwen's. Yeah, um, I remember, yeah, Jack's club, yeah. Because yeah, Jack used to have He used to be down the bottom of Double, didn't he, around the back there, yeah. It was, it was actually the church. Yeah, that's right, yeah. The cellar. Now, yeah. again, he was ahead of his time, Jack yeah. McEwen, because he had a paddy floor and he had a punch bag up. And my first impression of Master Skin was, and it was like seeing Bruce Lee. Yeah. And Bruce Lee obviously yeah. passed you know, yeah. a few years before. Um, and Master Skin stood in shorts, no top on, Yeah. Right, and he's got some little, little bag gloves on, <coughs> and he jumps up, so there's two bags, it's two, and he run up and he he sidekicked this first bag and kicked off that bag and went down another six foot down the room and booted the other one with the roundhouse kick. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. That's Jackie Chan. That's Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, and then listen to what you just. This is this is true. This just a quick one, Josh. Is that still? Have we got Paddy still in focus on this one, please? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the. There's a guy, an Iranian guy, sat on the floor with a pair of shorts on the same thing, and he's got a stick and he's or a rolling pin, down his shins. And yeah. I'm going. Yeah. And he's just sat there. And I'm like, there's only two of them, there's only master scanning this guy. And I went. Yeah. And like, <laughs> what is this? What's he doing? Yeah. And I'm doing my karate suit, yeah, and my black belt, and my brain yeah. belt, sorry, I went black belt. And then we did this first class. And um, and then he starts having us kick with a shin, which I was like, it was a bit that was a very foreign because we yeah, that. Of course. Thing. And I'm just kicked the bag with my shin. Never kicked a bag before in my life because you only mm. ever kicked these, you know, them shields. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm round out this bag with my flick, you know, like, because it was a yeah, flick yeah. karate instead of tie. And, I, and the bag was, one of them was softish. Yeah. It was almost rock hard. It had sand in it. Have you ever kicked a sandbag? Yes. Sandbag, trust me, it's like, it's, it's, it's soft it's like concrete. That. It's soft like concrete. concrete. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I made a question yeah. it. It's like moving concrete. Yeah. And I went, bong, and my shin went like a tuning fork. Yeah. <laughs> bong. And I went, and I'm like thinking, I wonder if there's anything to do with what he's doing over there. Yeah. And that was my first lesson. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Yeah. Um, but I thought, you know what? After seeing what he'd done, and he's jumped, he's kicked, and then yeah. he went up in the bag, and he just went, bop, 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 and he booted the bag about 50 times in about, like, less than a minute. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm having some of this. Yeah, exactly. Once I got over the shins thing, yeah. I then, well, I went into this thing, Paddy. I got myself a little stick, and a cop. It was a stick. It is a rope, and it was a stick. And I got it, and I, I used to write stuff on it, you know, yeah. Sandy's McShinney, <laughs> McShinney tapping stick, and, um, you know, like, bish bosh bish, and yeah, 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 or whatever, yeah. you know, all these yeah. little sayings on it. Yeah. And I used to whack my shins with his stick, yeah. 50 to 100 times a night. Yeah. Um, and eventually I got it to the point where I think the best ever did, I managed to break three inches of wood with my shin on a round house kick. Oh, a master skin did five. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. I know. Five one-inch boards with his shin, roundhouse kick. We all we couldn't hold it, Paddy. He kicked it, and we dropped him first of all. And he went mad. So he said, so because we couldn't get our hands around five inches properly to hold them for yeah. him. Yeah. So the, like he 
and it like the first one broke and the light they slipped out so the yeah. weld four and it just went straight through them like butter and it was like with his burst in and yeah. i was like this is why i was like this is yeah this is amazing he, I, I'd, I'd love to have met him um i'd always see and again with pictures with you in the local pavement i mean i knew his name obviously yeah. um but to see like you said to see that being in a room with just him and one other guy I mean that is right at the start to yeah, be a part of that yeah. it must have been amazing yeah it's interesting to see where it's you know like 77 to now i mean we're talking you know for coming up to 42 years mm. um you know seeing massive amounts of of change and improvements and mm. you know uh you know it's been incredible mm. uh, you know the amount of people that's gone on to do great i mean the, the guy, do you remember phil nurse yeah well phil he one of the champions he yeah. trained me for like 12 years um he got a red armband which is like a black belt mm. I uh, eventually opened his own club up in Radcliffe, then in Bury, and then his cousin invited him over to New York. He was going through a bit of a rocky patch with his missus, <clears throat> and he went for a holiday there, and he did like a bit of a, he did a training session out there for somebody, and people were just like blown away, because yeah. Muay Thai in America was never big. Yeah. He's still, about well, just now sort of getting bigger, but he, um, the guy said, you know, come back and do us a couple of seminars, you know, mm. over here, where the, the guys, are, you know, the kickboxing mad in America, you yeah. know, and wrestling, hence where UFC come from. But, um, he just he went up with her Phil and he went back again. This time he did like when he went for three weeks. And mm. He just kept doing this progressively over over a few years, to the point where he thought, you know what, I'm going to move over there. So yeah. I'm talking a good 15 years ago, Phil moved, um, and he opened the first authentic Muay Thai gym yeah. in New York. It's yeah. now the biggest and the best. Um, he's taught the, the likes of when, when he was right, John John Bones Jones, yeah, yeah, uh, George Saint Pierre. Wow. There are two of Phil's on his CV of teaching staff. You know Muay Thai, wow. obviously. Yeah. Uh, and Phil Bolton lad, you know, and yeah. he's just gone on and he started at my gym. Um, and he's still, like you, as humble and as polite and as respectful. Yeah. And he's got that martial art discipline, but he's got so much, you know, he's got like, he's just incredible. And, yeah. you know, it, you, you look at people, where they've come from now, they've done and what they've gone on to do. Yeah. And, you know, Bolton has been, it, you know, people say, what are you doing in Bolton? You know, I say, well, Bolton's been great to me. Bolton course, people yeah. have been amazing. I mean, mm. you, know, you know, I don't have to, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I kind of have to sell it to you, don't no, I? No, you know, no, you're yeah, a bold lad, and you've yeah. done a, you, the things you've done. Just a quick one, you know. We're talking about um, a word here, self-belief. Mm. Paddy, we've touched on a couple of these things. At what point? Um, how did you get into your industry? Because that's something I don't know. I've never. That was a uh, uh, God, a long, long time ago. Peter was on a, a comedy club in Manchester called um, the Frog and Bucket, Frog and Bucket, yeah. Which was like you did open spots and stuff like that, and. Uh, and I went with him and watched him on stage along with a few others and before he said, I was get me money, I went, all right, and he got 40 quid. And I remember sitting there thinking, well, I'll be 17 quid Saturdays and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, 40 pound, five minutes on stage, chatting. And it was literally like, I'm gonna give that a go. You know what I mean? And I'd always had the ability to sort of, wherever I worked or wherever I were with a group of lads or whatever, I could always get a laugh. You know what I mean? So I knew I could do that. I mean, it's a different gravy on stage. It's a, it is a skill. You've got to kind of hone. Uh, but I went, I did a thing uh, called the Newcastle Brown Ale Circuit. It was all the student universities and what have you. And I think it was Leicester or Lancaster. It began with L. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, the, the guy who was the comper, uh, I finished and he said, uh, I think he actually called me Patrick McGuinness at the time. He went, Patrick McGuinness, he claims it's his first time. As though like I'm a bit of a ringer. And I thought, I come on, I thought, well, if he's saying that, and he was a, a known stand-up at the time, I thought, there's something in this. So it was purely a financial thing. I never had any yearning to be on stage or be on telly or anything, ever. I was kind of happy-go-lucky, really. Uh, so that's how it started, and doing little bits of that, and then obviously Peter did a thing called The Services, which was a, a pilot he did years ago for Channel 4, and I did a little bit in that, not paid, and then uh, that Peter Kay thing came along, and uh, we did The Club, which went on to be the precursor to Phoenix Nights, and then we did Phoenix Nights, but all the way through all that, The Services, that Peter Kay thing, Phoenix Nights, second series of Phoenix Nights, I was still at Orridge, working so i'd kind of either turn up for a shift after just filming or finish a shift and go down to set and do like a scene it was mad totally mad it was only when max and paddy came along that peter said luke 
you might want to give it a go, this. You know what I mean? He said, you've done like bloody three, four, four series on telly. You know, but again, I think it's just, I don't know if it's a Bolton mentality or a working class kind of mentality or how you're brought up, but I always, as long as I got a wage, I were happy, you know, and you're always taught to work and earn money. And I always found work because the people used to say that there's no work. They were. It's just that people didn't want to probably do them jobs. I mean, some of the jobs I've done over the years are horrible, horrible, horrendous jobs. But I were working, you know, I were earning a wage. So, so to go into an industry where you're not getting paid unless you're working terrified me, you know, because I was working for the council, I was up at Oryx Legis Centre, so you get holiday pay and more importantly sick pay <laughs> um, for the odd for the odd day you had on. <laughs> so to go from a safety net to nothing, yeah. it's very similar really to, to, to you, what you do, because you have a club there and, and that's based on people coming through your door. Yeah, you know, if no one comes through your door, yeah. you're not getting paid, you've got mortgage and bills yeah. like everyone else. So you're in a job where if you're not working or you're not, so you have, to, you have, in my job, you have to sort of go out, you can't just sit back waiting for the phone to ring, oh, we've got a part for you, we've got this, we've got that. So I took the mentality I had from working and everything else into that TV world and just kept, so when I first started off, you know, after Max and Paddy, I used to write for a local radio DJ in Manchester, I used to write stories from, and he'd read them out on her as though it, it were his words. So I'd do all that. And I'd do writing for other radio stations. Then I'd do bits of telling. I'd go on a guest and I'd be on like eight out of ten cats. And I was always doing something. I'd do tours and then I'd do like... I, I'd just turn me on to anything. I'd give it a go. I didn't care what anyone said. Because I used to think, I'm earning. You know, and that that were me. And and thankfully, touch wood, it's been good to me. And, and you can you sort of start slowing down as you get older. And you start looking at things differently. But But again, I'll still always have that same work ethic yeah. in my head. I'll always have that where I'm like... drive. Got, exactly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it, there's only so much will come to you. You know, it's like you in your club. That'll be fine. Everyone knows it. But if you're not out there and if you're not advertising, you're not, you know, eventually that footfall stops. No matter what you do, no matter what job, you've got to... Keep putting yourself you've, out you've got, there. Of course yeah, you do. Of course, of course you, you do. Yeah. And keep, keep yourself in people's minds. Yeah. And that's but what I It's did. interesting what you say there, Paddy, because I mean, somebody said to me, Sandy, you're always advertising. I, you know, I go out to daft o'clock in the night and put a, a you know, poster up or a, mm. a banner or a something and, you know, you know, I'm giving out cards every two seconds to people. I'll always, somebody stops me, you know, yeah. bum, 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 and never, ever stop. Somebody said, we ever retire you, Sandy? I went, no, I'm never going to retire. Yeah. Um, never. I'll, yeah. I, you know, I'll die retiring. Yeah. And, and I think that work out, it's interesting what you're saying. Um, but it's right, because you were saying about that with the advertising, because I remember, again, as a kid growing up in Bolton, literally, no matter where you were, where you were going, RH, wherever you were, you'd always see uh, a Sandy Hull, you know, a Thai boxing club. But you would, you just would. It would just, but you, but you never, yeah. it was just part of the town. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was like, you never used to go, oh, there's that club, or there's this... You just presumed it'd be there. Yeah. It was weird, yeah. like, you know, it's only just you saying that now that that memory's come back to me. I was like, God, blimey, yeah. <laughs> but that's part of being in Bolton and, and being a part of the town. Yeah. You know what I mean? A sticker yeah. on every lamppost. Yeah, yeah no, it is. But, <laughs> but it's true what you're saying then, because yeah. if you sit back and go, I've got a successful club and this and that, yeah, it'll do it. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it very goes quickly. so far, doesn't it? Of course but, it uh, does. But you know, if you stop, people think you've stopped. And yeah. Somebody said to me once, Paddy, and it's an interesting one, as much as like, I, you know, I. I say, hey, McDonald's, I hate it. I think yeah. it's just, you know, it's made the world uh, a worse place. Um, but they never stop advertising. And when mm -hmm. does Coca-Cola stop advertising? And not that we're in any, any, even anywhere, you know, not a millionth of them. Yeah. Um, you know, the, they, they're constantly <laughs> advertising all the time. They it's, spend millions of advertising a, it, to, power, keep it, yeah. to keep it at the top. The power of advertising is a true story of this. Uh, a guy I was at a set seminar many moons ago. I was actually hosting it. It's nothing to do with me. It's a, it's a big business thing. And it was in Geneva, and they had the ship this guy in from America who was all about advertising, and he was giving a speak a speech to everyone. Really interesting, charismatic bloke on stage, and uh, he was saying about this story about this kid got lost in Disneyland, got split up from from his parents, and the mum and dad were frantic trying to. This is years and years and years ago. I don't even think like CCTV were a thing back then. So they're all out, and and they found him eventually. And the kid, they found this kid. They all went to this place, and it basically was just a massive, big Pepsi sign, Pepsi Cola. And this child, four or five year old, 
saw that sign and just gravitated because it recognised it as a, a, drink as, as a thing that's ever seen in advert and stood under it. And that's how they found him. And it, and that's the that that is stripped right back the power of advertising. Well that child has looked at that symbol, not a clue what bloody Pepsi is at his age. Yeah. He just knew it was a thing and everyone had it. So the kid went to it and stood there and just and then they found him there. You know, he could have wandered anywhere, but he was, that was the that's the power of advertising, you know. When he told them stories, this bloke said, I was like, God, it, it's so true that it's wow. so and it's and it's just there. You know what I mean? It's just there. It's mad. It is, it's mad, but it does work. It does work. So basically Paddy, I mean, you've worked your absolute backside. When people see you there, I say, you know, on a Saturday night, they take me out, which has been very successful. And, um, you know, people don't realise how hard you, you've, you've worked to get to, to something like that. They just think, oh, he's there because he's there. Mm. And people see, assume these things, don't they? But, you know, just some of the things you told me, I, you know, I didn't even know those things. I mean, this, this, this blank page, here, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I've, I've, I've got a page to talk about what, how hard you've worked, Paddy, yeah. you know, and it's like... It, well, again, it's, it's, it, you're right about, like, take me out and shows I do now. You know, I've been doing it. 20 years. Yeah. People don't realise that. You know, like even when people go, oh, you started off with Peter Kane. So I've not worked with Peter for like 17 years. Serious? Yeah. It's We've never done anything. Yeah, Paddy's. 17 years ago, Max and Paddy. Wow. So, you know, we're mates. We see each other, you know, all the time and everything else. And, and no doubt we'll do something together in the future. God knows what. But people just don't think. They don't realise. So they just, again, Pepsi. Yeah. Everyone thinks back to that and that's what it is and that's that. Yeah. You know, so that's the power of it all. But, but take me out and all the shows I do now and all the big things I do now all come from 20 years. It's not, it's that where they say overnight success, it's like overnight for 20 years because, oh, yeah. you know, that writing for radios, no one knew about that. You know, all these things you do to get better and better and improve. I had my own radio show and stuff. You know, I remember, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Lanc Radio Lancashire back in the day. Yeah. Asked if I'd do a show from, and I'm going back again now, 15 years ago, no experience of working in radio or anything. And I just said to this producer at the time, I said, I'll do it. I said, can I play any song I want? They give me, this is how long ago it was. You didn't dial it in, it was a book, like a karaoke book in a bar. So I flick through like that, and I go, David Soul, Silver Lady. Can we have that? Yes, put that on. And I talk, and but again, I just did it. I didn't go... Oh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Never done it. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll get it. Because I were hungry, so I was yeah, hungry for so it. You know what I mean? Going. I said, just yeah. do it, no fear. Mm. Um, Stepping over that line, isn't it? Of course, and the thing is, you, you do make mistakes. Of course you do, everyone does. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like your kick on the leg, Master Scan, yeah. stays with you. Yeah. You know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. He certainly knows what it feels like because you got that all them years ago. So then you're, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's just yeah. having them things, that memory goes in. And then you go, I'll, I'll work on that and I'll make that, I'll become that person who does that and knows that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's how I've always looked at everything. And it's even now, like coming in here today, coming through the button market and everything else, I can still walk through there, I'll still sit and know people, I'll, I'll still chat to them and, and there's nothing changing. And, but that's what makes you a, 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 the person you are, I think, you know what I mean? And Bolton's definitely that kind of place where... If you walk through it, giving it Charlie big time, you soon oh, yeah. bring you down a peg. Yeah, so you then. know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just, I don't know, it's just, I think it's nice. I was talking to, to Peter a few weeks back about, about Bolton and growing up and different things and what have you. And I said, it's amazing you now when you go around the town and, you know, like back streets and stuff. And you go, we used to play there as a kid. We used to do that. Oh, I remember we drew that on that wall there. But it's just great to sort of have that, you know. I live over in Cheshire now. My family are there. And it, and it, I moved out of Bolton in the end. And it's just, I suppose it's part of the job. But Peter, ringing the doorbell like 11 o'clock at night, constantly. And I was, uh, and when you've got kids and you're out working, and someone's ringing your doorbell, group of lads, 11 o'clock at night, your wife's in and you're on with the children. I, reached, I rang the police, so I did all, not, no threats, no. but I'm like, it can't happen, what can you do? So we moved on, and frankly, that never happens again. But all my family is still here, all my friends are here, I'm here all the time. So that's that, you know, you just, you just uh, move on. But I'll never not be a Boltonian, you know what I mean? It's just, that's, that's me, 40 odd year here, you know, you're yeah. born and bred, it's just one of them things. Um, but it's, but it's, again, when I come back like today on the carpet, where I put my old pound coins in, 
you know, but you walk round. Oh, yeah. Ben's old ones he's got, Paddy. You know, it's it's great. Great. That without your glove box, so it's starting your thing with it everything. Was in the, it was in there, yeah, 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 yeah. I pulled them out, I went, oh, I'd be right, that. Right, yeah. the there. Four gold doubloons. Yeah, Sorry, so, um, so, yeah, it's just, it's just nice. Yeah. Nice to have all that, you know. It's, mm. uh, it's really important to me, that. Well, Paddy, you know, time, we've, we've had an hour. Can you believe that? Yeah, yeah it flies. Where's that gone? Flies by. Flies by. I knew it would. I knew it would. But I'll come back in again sometime. It would be amazing yeah. to have you back in. Write so a it, few more things on your pad <laughs> next time. We'll be able to do two hours, <laughs> won't we? We'll be, we'll be able to do 20 hours if we get the right pad. <laughs> I'm gutted. I had some things on there that were asking after. I'm going, why didn't I tell you that? Damn, damn, flipping damn. I mean, you know, there's, there's more to life than hot custards as well. Oh, <laughs> yes. He's going yes to, you know he's going to try one now, don't yeah, you? I'll, I'll try one. I'll put it in the microwave <laughs> and I'll be texting you. Yeah, blows up. Horrendous. Horrendous, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It'll be all right. an Instagram picture. Yeah. You watch it. Like, be it shower like that. <laughs> This hot custard will appear like that into the show and he'll go, he'll go, Sam, yeah. I'm just about to try this hot custard. What the chuff? No, not happening. <laughs> not happening? Uh, no, I'll give it a whirl. So give it? Yeah, yeah, I'll have to Please. build myself up to it. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's slowly, you know, a few degrees. What, Paddy, anything new coming up? Anything to talk about? Uh, oh, God, there's all sorts of them. I mean, I'm doing the new series of Take Me Out. Um, when does that start? That's... I started this year, I started in November, yeah. and then it'll be on telly in January next year. Uh, we've got another series of Keeping Paddy Pitch Show, which is working on at the minute. Uh, we're just in talks for doing a film next year. Brilliant. Just doing that. And there's another couple of things as well. So, again, like I was saying to you, it's just about never sitting back. Momentum. Always, you, you can't sit yeah. back and give it, that's me. You know yeah. what I mean? You've got to keep going. At any level, you've got to keep going. You know, I remember like when you see people like um, what's he called, the Facebook guy? What's um, Yeah, you know, I saw a picture of him the other day, sat in Facebook's offices on the phone. He's thinking, any of it? And I'm like, he's got about twelve billion quid. This fella, like, what's he doing? But he's just for him. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's about momentum. the business and yeah, the momentum, you know. And it's just, mm -hmm. and that's him. So if he's still turning out in the morning. What excuse have the rest of us got? You know what I mean? It's like you've just got to you've just got to do it, haven't you? Yeah. And that's that's what it's all about. Brilliant. Well, do you know what, Paddy? Like I guess I could talk to you for absolutely hours, but you know, I know you're a busy man. You're a family man. You've got all, you've given us I'm time. Gonna go to and, come I'm going to go and go and visit the family now. So they'll be giving it. He were in Bolton. He didn't call in. Yeah. That'll be it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that'll be it. That'll be it. My name will be Mod Christmas Day. So I'm going to go and do the rounds now, and then I'll get back and pick the kids up. Brilliant. Yeah. Right, thanks for giving, uh, giving so me time. Today, thank so you very much, thank sir, you. you, gentlemen. Yeah. And if you get any bit past, we want me to come in and, do, and drop a leg kick in. <laughs> when you're next in your feature film, can you call me? <laughs> Yeah. Certainly, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You could be, you could do stuck all in there. Yes, and I can constantly come in with hot custards, keep yeah. people, like, keep people going with me. My bash blog cups, yeah. my, my, my empty, my empty paper, and my four, four. Uh, now this brilliant. is, this is. Remember, everyone, these have got four gold doubloons here, oh, look at right? That. What Paddy tried to put in the machine, oh. right? And. It failed him. I couldn't believe so it. So if he's got a parking ticket, we've got proof here. I'm yeah. glad I realised it because if I'd have pulled him up the parking, I'd say, "What's going on here?" And he'd have gone, "They're not. They're all." I'd have been like, "Oh Jesus!" All right. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Brilliant. Right. Right. We're going to call it. It's off up double now. So it's off up double. And uh, thank you very much for everybody tuning in and watching. And thanks for this most amazing man, Paddy, for giving up his time. Thanks for watching, everyone. And we'll see you on the next Sunday's Bash Blog podcast. See you next time. Ciao.